Good evening, everybody. This is another week of Free to Heal, where we come together every week so that we can try to heal the ravages of incarceration. And tonight, um, we're going to do something that I think is uh, going to be funny, because I got a list from uh, a guy at Folsom. He gave me this, and it is called um, the Don't Trip List. <laughs> And it is, it says, Dear Family, the following is a list of some habits I've picked up while doing time in prison. Since I'll be paroling soon and moving in with you, I'm sending you this list. So in the event any of these things occur, you don't trip. Okay? So now what I want to do is for those of y'all that have been incarcerated, I want you to tell me why they're saying this. Okay, so now, if you find me doing my laundry in the sink, shower, or toilet, don't trip. Don't trip. Why would you be doing your laundry in the sink, the shower, or the toilet? Somebody that yeah. no, tell me. Go ahead, Robert, tell me. I'm you. They still institutionalized. You're a creature of habit. You used to wash your clothes either in the shower, in the toilet, or in the sink. And why did you have to do that? Because the laundry only only washes laundry once a week, and on occasion they lose your laundry, and oh, you're wow. the one that's stuck with the problem. Oh wow! So they would lose. Okay, so the laundry gets done once a week. You put it in a bag and send it to the laundry, and sometimes they come back and they don't have all your stuff. They they steal your they steal your personal clothes. Your personal clothes, they steal it. Really? Yeah, that's why you wash your personal clothes. Most people do it in a bucket. They give you buckets to do it now. But if you ain't got a, uh, a bucket, you do it in the sink. Or in the shower. In the shower. I normally do mine in the shower. My okay. Drawers, the clothes. <laughs> that way. Okay. Yeah. So they're telling your family, if you see me do that, don't trip. Okay. Don't trip. If I hang my wet laundry on or around my bed, don't trip. We don't have a dryer. <laughs> we don't have a dryer to dry dry our clothes with, so we gotta hang them up in the cell. Okay. If you your clothes, you don't want nobody stealing your clothes, so you don't hang them in the day room. You hang them in your cell. Okay. And if you and if you're in a dorm, you hang them on your bed, huh? Yep. You gotta hang on your bed. Yep. If you treat me unfairly and I tell you I'm 602 and you don't trip. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. What is a 602, y'all? When you write someone up for uh illegal activity, they should who, who you writing them. up? Whoever he's talking about, complaint form. He talking about he's gonna write up another inmate. Okay. Or he's or he gonna write up his uh family member. Okay. Do something wrong. <laughs> but in yeah. the prison, you 602 a complaint usually of, of some corrections officer or something, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. That's who that goes to a correction officer. Now and yeah. now do they do they 602 inmates don't 602 each other, do they? Yeah, they do. They do that too. Now and then they do that too. Especially when they don't shower. Really? Yeah, they 602 them. You gotta shower. Nobody if they don't shower. shower. Yeah, if yeah. nobody wants your cell, they want to smell your ass. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Diane, yeah. I know that makes sense to you with your bath taking yourself. Yes, and my son, because you know he got to take his. Okay, so they're going 602 you for not taking a shower. That's deep. Okay. Okay, so now back to the don't trip list. They're telling the family, don't trip if I go shopping with two laundry bags. <laughs> Why the Get two laundry package. bags, Patrick? In your package. Patrick. Well, we, we, we don't have plastic bags or paper bags when you go to the canteen. So you have to carry your own food back and that's how you do it. It actually makes sense nowadays because I've seen people with bags now because they don't want plastic or paper they just put stuff in like a duffel bag and take it home especially uh -huh. after covid you yeah. just stock up 
Yes. Yes. If I refuse to leave the checkout line before signing the receipt, if I leave the check, refuse to leave the line until I check, until I sign the receipt. So these are things on the don't trip list. Don't trip list James okay this is a letter bit that was sent home to the so these are some habits I picked up and what's the habit associated with signing at the checkout line that's what that you package. have to do you gotta sign when you go to canteen you gotta sign for it you sign for it and you get a copy and they get a copy otherwise your, mo your money doesn't pay for it wow you also get a fingerprint on there really yeah, yeah, I'll be fingerprinted. What? Yeah. So, so for you to buy stuff from Canteen, you got to go get your stuff, sign, and put your fingerprint. Because the people in the Canteen, which is inmate too, they will steal your stuff and sign your name. On oh it. my gosh! So, so you got to sign your signature uh, and your fingerprints as a proof it was you, so they could prove it was you. Wow. Uh, here's the thing, also. Just so you know, uh, when guys couldn't make it because of their job assignments to canteen, they would get somebody else to go for them. And oh. then uh, uh, the their, uh, what do you call it, the squad unit, they caught on to what was going on. So they went back and tested every single fingerprint for the people that have been going to canteen, and they charged those guys with fraud. Oh, wow. <laughs> and They and charged I, them? Yeah, yeah, fraud. Well, but the, but, but they were being sent. But they were being sent by the people whose canteen it was, or were they just not supposed to? Boy, they really serious you about know, process, aren't they? Well, the fact is, you know, I can send somebody to canteen and spend over hundred, two hundred dollars. Then when the kid, the bill come, I say I didn't do that. Somebody, you know, took my stuff, took my money, took my canteen. Oh, wow! So they got to get. So the canteen people got to give all my money back. Oh, wow. And it became a racket, a hustle. It's a hustle, yeah. See, let me tell you this. The one thing about public policy is all does it take, all it takes is one person to do something and to try something. And the next thing you know, the whole policy changed and it's not working for everybody. Um, but they have to do something that's going to work for everybody. So I got to sign it. And now they, now they got to add on here, Robert, and leave my fingerprint. Right. OK. Right. I tell the clerk at the st at the store to take it off my books. We already know what that is. That's how, much <laughs> that's, that's how much money I got on my books. Right. Take it off my books. If a car alarm goes off and I sit immediately on the ground, don't trip. <laughs> What's the alarm for? What's the normal alarm? It's going down on the yard. Right, yard down, everybody got to get down. Right, so for people who don't know what that means, um, if if there's something that happens and there's an alarm and you're on the yard in the penitentiary, you got to get down, you got to inmates have to sit down. So they have some that have mobility vests on so that the uh, officers in the towers know that they can't just get down they have some that are have hearing impaired like all different things um in case an inmate can't do that but these are the kinds of things that loved ones pick up the habits they pick up while incarcerated so that's one of the things so i had a friend who was an inmate for a while and then when she actually years later came back as an instructor and the um yard down alarm went off she got down on the ground and the other instructor was like what are you doing you're not an inmate but she knew exactly what to do so she stopped and dropped okay because it it was ingrained in her when you hear that sound you better get on the ground so she knew what to do okay and she followed that um if i show my id every time we go into a restaurant so why are they showing IDs when they go into restaurants, y'all? Tell me, tell me what the what 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 that's what that's from. Because every time you come out your cell, you got to show your ID everywhere you go. Yeah, what? But it, it's something related to food, right? No, you have to go when you go into the into in the chow. 
I don't know if they show it to child, but I know they got to show it everywhere else they go. Like yeah, some prison, some prison. When you go on the child, you got to show it. You know, uh -huh. it depends on where you at. You got to show it. All. If you go into another building, you got to show it. Uh -huh. you go to the yard, you got to show it. Uh -huh. yeah. Um, if we go out to dinner and I bring my own cup and and fork, <laughs> don't trip. Well, What's that about? You don't want to eat after nobody else or drink after nobody nasty ass. <laughs> So wait, so let me ask you this. So you so you take your do you take your own plastics or do you because I guess you guys can't have metal, right? No, nope, no metal. Right. So it have to be plastic. So do the people they, um they how do they get the plastic? You buy out the canteen. You can buy your own uh, spoons out the canteen, spoons and forks out the canteen, and uh the child house will give you some too. To oh, with. really? Yeah. See, th that's why I say I, I, do, I knew this was going to be a trip because it's like some things, you know, as much as I am in and out of prisons and institutions, I would have thought that a lot of this just made sense but and that I knew about it, but I didn't. Um, if I make my dinner in a plastic bag with hot water, <laughs> right? That's you, Cheryl? <laughs> So when we got the when we got to Wasika, the men had been there for 17 and a half years and they had put them out and brought the women in. But they had the men had lost the microwave. So they never gave us one. And we had to use them spigots with that water. But they they clean the trash can out, put a plastic bag in it. You put your rice and stuff in a plastic bag, put the water in it and put it in hot water and cook it. Oh, wow. Really? What in the trash can? In the trash can. That's the only place we had to cook. Wow. And then they got in trouble. So so the girls like old school was you cook on the radiator in Danbury in Dublin, you cook with the iron. So the girls in Wasika wow. would cook quesadillas with the iron. One of the girls got caught and she lost her camp. Cooking with the iron. And they took her camp. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you can make cheese toast with the iron. <laughs> oh, wow. So so a friend of mine, we used to ride to CIW together to teach. He would teach one class. I'd be in another classroom. And so every, every time on the way, I promise you, y'all, I wanted to put him out of the car because he would tell me things. And one of the things that made me want to put him out was him telling me about somebody telling him, come on down, man, we're going to barbecue. And when he got down there, they had taken the mattress off the, off the bed frame and was putting a fire up under the bed to make a barbecue grill. Y'all, I was done. I said, you just making that up. You making that up because you want me to believe that. But that's then, true. I, wait, I know it's true because wait, uh, maybe I want to say maybe a couple years later, somebody had a video of it that they had, I guess, snuck out and he sent it to me and I told him, I'm so done with you. I'm so done. But let me tell you what it tells me. Some of the most ingenious people in the world are incarcerated and necessity is the mother of invention. You want to find something to do. You want to find a way to make that happen if you have to. Right, so the grilled cheese with the with the iron sound good to me, though, Roberta. It sounds. <laughs> <laughs> but they do. They make grilled cheese. They make a uh, quesadilla, and anything else that like sandwich stuff. So that like a panini, huh? Any anything panini, you put on some bread, panini. huh? Panini is that what it is? Uh huh. That's yeah. And anything with some with some bread. Oh, and you, oh shoot! Uh -oh, what you doing? You all right? Hold on. She's trying to get in the hammock. She's not playing with her. Please tell me you didn't fall on the ground. Are you all right, Cheryl? She's okay. Okay. She's not okay. Send help. Thank you. You all right, baby? Thank you. Uh uh, I'm gonna sit over here. No, yeah. I feel yeah, like you go somewhere wait. more stable. Yeah, go no, somewhere no. where it's safe. Wait a minute, let me tell you what. Let me show you what I did. The reason, oh, we. <laughs>
I don't know how to make the thing turn. I tried to lay on this. On the head. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that right now. Okay, you not, this. you know, you don't go do that. You sit down on something solid. How about that? Oh, you need two hands wait. for that. You need two hands. Okay. Um, here's the next one. If I finish my dinner before you're done setting the table. Oh wow. Don't trip. Yeah, don't trip. Why? Because I already got so many minutes to eat. <laughs> <laughs> And they eating fast. Uh, so I'm trying to remember where I was and somebody told a guy, hey, nobody's going to take your food. They're not going to take it. You you can slow down and eat. <laughs> Enjoy so, your food. Enjoy it. Exactly. Um, yeah, you only have so much time to eat. They only give you so much time to eat. So that's why you eat fast. Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me see. If I choose to drink out of an old coffee jar, don't trip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if I send out letters without sealing the envelopes. Okay. Oh wow. Right. What I why, did that for I did that for six months. I did that for six months. Did I you? still might do it. I still might do it today. I forget to seal it because you can't seal your letters in there. They gotta yep, be able so to okay. read them. I See, still do it. And listen, and, and listen, to us, this is like like joking and whatever, but the thing of it is, is these are real things that people do. Like you said, you did it for six months. Yeah. I'm stealing letters. And people that that have never been incarcerated don't know why you're doing it. Yeah. They just think it's strange. Yeah. These strange. are the things that you've been programmed to do because this is the way you had to do it in the institutions. Oh. So that's another one. Okay, let's see. If I roll up my mattress in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> roll up. So are this what now that is that um in cells too or only in dorm areas? Sales is in sales too. Really? You're going in soldier mode. You're going in soldier mode there because you might not make it back to your cell. So yeah, most people do it because Ooh. they get in soldier mode. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. What was the question? The statement, Noreen. If I um don't trip if I uh, roll up my mattress in the morning. That's a man. That's a penitentiary for men. Women don't do that kind of stuff. Yeah, you, they, you well, running, they do it in state in the state penitentiary for women. Only when we was double scrubbing our room, but we sometimes. Well, yeah, only when not we not for that's for danger. Because did you hear what he said, Roberta? He might cannot come back that day. Right, but and that's probably for, like, we did it. We was double scrubbing. Yeah, yeah. what is double scrub, okay. Roberta? What's double can, scrub? We get up and clean up that room, just all that dust, and you got to clean oh. up. Again, yeah, you roll the mattress up so you can clean up under it and uh -huh. get under the bed and clean up and make that funky ass roommate do it too. <laughs> Wait, I just learned to, tonight that um, because I always thought a 602 was only for, for staff, but come to find out they 602 and uh, inmates too because. Uh, Lionel was saying if they don't take no shower, you might six o two them because you don't want to smell that funky butt. So that's that's deep. I just I, I see I learned something. That's what I'm telling y'all. I love talking y'all because I learn something new all the time. Okay. Um, it's like I was telling you the other day. So your body in the federal prison, and I don't know they can speak to this on state in in the feds because your body belongs to them. You cannot tattoo yourself. You cannot masturbate because you get in trouble and you'll go to the shoe for it. No <laughs> tattoos, no sunburns, no masturbation. No sunburns. Wow. Wow, that's property of the state. That's crazy, isn't it? You property of the government, so you can't even get a sunburn. That's My son crazy. got tattooed up, so what happened? Well, he look, I'm sure if they had caught him in the process. Oh, a bunch of them get tattooed up, but it's like you get in trouble. How can they tell it's a new tattoo? Right. It's only if they notice it's new and then uh -huh. they'll write you up. For sure. You, and some people, the, the cup, you, you go on the shoe for masturbation. You go on the shoe for masturbation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right up out of there. They pop it. That's it. You take your head to chew for that. <laughs> wow. Okay, and guess, what, what, what guess, was the crazy part to me about that? This is the crazy prison, thing yeah. to me about that. Is for that prison, now yeah. I'm in I'm in I'm in I'm in privacy my whole time. So 
<laughs> I can do it more. Like, I don't know how sending me to the shoe is going to make me stop doing that. Exactly. Because you're going to do it more in the shoe, in the hole. That's what I'm saying, because ain't nobody yeah. coming. Ain't nobody else coming yeah. here. Yeah. Shit. That's backwards. Yeah, it's way, way backwards. That's backwards. Um, I set up my laundry, my dirty laundry, every Sunday evening. So you already explained that earlier, right? They only get do laundry once a week, right? So you set your laundry out in that bag, I guess, and they come get it, huh? Yeah, that's how they pick it up. Yeah. Now, is it on Sundays? It depends on where you are. Different buildings do it different days. Okay. So we had our own washer and dryer. We did, too. Yeah, you, you got did. a washer and dryer in jail. In, in yeah. Prison. Yeah, but we just had uh, days. Everybody Certain days that, that they could wash. Yeah, yeah. so I had. I would have... Well, you um, getting in getting somebody else's uh, wash lot. Say that again. You getting a one fifteen if you get in somebody else wash lot because it's gonna cause a fight or something. I guess. Oh, okay. I, could, I would have I would have inmates to tell me, look, it's my laundry time. I need to leave, and I would let them leave class early, um, because I knew that they had a slot. So, but I guess in the men's institutions they don't have that, so um, they have to put their laundry out. And they do their own laundry because uh, Lana was saying that they will steal your personal clothes. So they don't send those to the wash. So that's why they wash them in the shower. Um, Don't trip if I get upset because you're on the phone during my phone time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know too many fights that started in the pen penitentiary behind that phone. Right, Oscar, tell me about it. Unmute, tell me about the phone time, Oscar. Oscar, unmute. Wait one second. There you go, unmute. It's not unmuted, sweetie. You're not unmuted, Oscar. Oscar, we can't hear you. You're still on mute, sweetie. And he crack it up, too. I know. That's why I wanted to hear what he was saying, because he was laughing so hard. Oh, there you go. Can you hear me now? I can. So yeah. what's up with the phone time? Uh, I, yeah, I got it fine like three times because a lot of people, they use the phone. Sometimes you need to make emergency phone call. If they don't give you respect, they still dial again. And you tell the person, hey, I was next. Uh, why you dial again? And he told you, I don't give a fuck, he told you. I said, really? Punch him up in that moment. Oh, you walk away. You have a decision. What are you going to do? It's even you walk away, huh? They, next time they do again because they see like you are a chicken, you know? Oh. I have a, a, like three, five. Level four, special level four. Level four. Really? You mentioned something about when they, yeah, when they say keep down, level four was 15 years in level four. You cannot sit down. You have to lay down all your yeah. body in the grass. No, they shoot you. One yeah. time, one guy sit down, they talk, they talk him, uh, go put your body in the grass. If you don't listen, they shoot. If he was close to me. They shoot in the eyes. If he lose his eyes. Yeah, level four is more than level three, level two. One there. Wow. Were you this one? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So if you know, if you know, if you know, and mm -hmm. so, so now if they hear a car alarm and they get on the ground, people shouldn't be surprised that they're getting on the ground like that. They shouldn't because it could have cost them their lives in the penitentiary not to get down and lay down when that happened, okay? Yeah, that's something you really have to break as a habit is when you hear an alarm like prison, your instinct, like you said, you know, we, we or creatures of habit, the first couple of months when you hear an alarm and it sounds like prison, you really want to get down. But you hold yourself back, but you still go to the motion of almost getting down. Yeah. I had a, a guy tell me he only did like 19 months, but he was like, when he first came home, he was mad with his wife because they went somewhere and it was count time. And he was so upset because he felt like he should be back for count time and he was in trouble and he was frustrated with her. I'm supposed to be back already. I'm supposed to be. 
And it took him a minute to realize, wait a minute, you're not, you don't have to be there for count time. It's okay if you're out past whatever the hour was. But for yeah, him, but some people have curfews and they treat it as a count time. Some people have what? Curfew. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah. And he was, but he was just upset about it. And the thing is, is then, you know, he had to try to explain that to her. But at the time, he didn't even know to explain it. That's why I thought this was so good, because it's like, um, hey, why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? This is, again, part of the reason that we do Free to Heal is because the people that you that are your loved ones, they don't even know why you're what you're feeling, what you're thinking and why you're doing some of the things that you're doing. You know, and they may think it's very strange. and They looking at you sideways. Why are you doing that? And you because may not even know to explain it. Huh? We're we are institutionalized. If Absolutely. you do 20, 30 years, you get into a habit of where you don't think. An alarm goes off, you hit the ground. It's ca it's count time or the sun goes down or it's 9 o'clock. You have to be in your living area. If you're not in your living area, you're in trouble. Wow. Wow. And see, and, and, and to anybody that might be listening to this, that it, you know, is not a part of this group or whatever. For anybody that's listening, I need you to pay attention to these things. Why? Because if you see your loved one who has been incarcerated do these things literally, while this is funny and is entertaining or whatever, these things are real. These are habits that they had to develop to survive in incarceration. And the thing of it is, don't trip. You can gently remind them you don't have to do that now. But recognize if you've been doing it for 20 or 30 years, it's going to take more than just one or two times of somebody saying you don't have to do that for them not to do it anymore. This would be really helpful for loved ones to say, look, it's not count time. We can be out. Hey, you, you don't have to look around for permission to get up from the dinner table because Absolutely. we're used to sitting down for dinner and you can't get up. Right. Roberta, you wanted to say something. You already talked about the shower with your um, shoes, your flip flop. Um, let me see. Uh, the, I don't think they got to that one yet, but I think it's on here. Yeah, I still. Uh, if I go to a, the room, a hotel, or something, I still take my flip flops. See, and it, and it's something because most people that I know they they do that for years afterward. Now, I'm not opposed to that, especially like you say, going to a public place like that. You know, um, but understanding that um, usually they clean them, you know what I mean? But it's still it's still a habit. You know what I'm saying? They usually clean them showers, be at least between uh, uh, occupants, they clean them, you know. Um, so that's one thing. Let me see. Um, if you find me in the garage drunk with two bags of sugar and rotten fruit, don't trip. <laughs> Making that fruit out. Making that Prudo, baby. You gotta have that Prudo. Okay, if I'm drunk and there's sugar and fruit, you know what happened. <laughs> so don't trip, okay? Um, if I'm in the backyard bathing with the garden hose, what's oh, that about? I don't know what that's about. I don't know that one. That's about uh, when you either you go to the yard or you can shower. So sometimes people just go to the yard and they grab the hose out while they're out there and they, they wash up. They shower with uh, the garden hose. Really? Cold. Yeah, on the yard. Wow, okay. They clean, they clean the ass, though. So you can't knock them. You see no, kids no. clean the ass after good sweat. Well, as a, as a person who will be forced to live with them, I will be happy no matter where they were as long as their behind was getting clean. Yes, that would be a good thing. I certainly wouldn't be mad at them. If you got to do it out there or in here or whatever, as long as it's clean and it ain't stinking, I'm good. Um, if I flush the toilet over and over again. Why is that? That's a bill. No, 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 no. You don't want you in a little small cell. And you don't want your celly smelling your dump. So each time you drop one, you flush one. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, courtesy. <laughs> courtesy flush, courtesy flush. And wait, okay, so now I used to do it anyway. I never been in a penitentiary like that. 
but I used to do it because I lived in a um a single with a roommate when we were in college. And sometimes due to class schedules, work schedules, whatever, she may have to go to the bathroom while I'm in the shower getting ready or vice versa. And it's like, hey, if you got to do that, flush it with a gun and I can't smell. So I started doing that in college based on that. And, and that's why as an adult, I do it. And I haven't been in the penitentiary, but I will be, I, I promise you on more than one occasion, been in a public restroom and go in the public restroom and be like, courtesy flush, courtesy flush. <laughs> Because they don't get it. just And I'm sure they may not even know what the heck I'm talking about. But please flush. They don't have to. They can't smell if it ain't in the room. Right? Simple things. Okay? So we don't have to be in the penitentiary to do that, to be a, to use a courtesy flush. Okay? Tip for the day, y'all. Um, if I'm taking a bird bath in the toilet or the sink, oh, my gosh. That's self-explanatory, Right? Sometimes I know my dad, when he was saying when he was on heroin, before he got himself clean, he used to have to go in the um, gas station bathroom. And he said he would even try to put his feet in the um, in the sink, lift his feet up and put them in the sink to try to get them clean. Uh, what if y'all on lockdown? Right. And they not letting you out for all them showers. You got to figure out how to get clean some kind of way. And and obviously that's a thing. Because if you want 602 me because I stink, I definitely need to figure out how to, <laughs> how, to not how, to be, how to not be stinking. Okay, let me see what's another one. Um, if I yell man down when one of the kids get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> man down, man down. Okay, I think that was pretty self-explanatory. Um, if I wear my sandals in the shower, I told you, Roberta, I told you I thought it was on here. Cause that was the one that always tripped me out. When my guy came home, I was like, why does he have flip-flops in the, in the bathroom? I just didn't understand that. I think that I, of course I learned why, but again, that was always my thing. So when I would be in CIW or any of the prisons, I tell him, listen, I, actually, I even had an inmate to ask me, get ready to go home. Should I wear my shower shoes? Yeah, you in the shower. Huh? You in the shower. You in the shower with five other people, and next thing you know, you see some yellow water on the ground. That's 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 all on your feet. That's piss all on your feet. And so you need shower shoes. So someone, uh, two people gonna be in there peeing while you are all in the shower. So yeah, yeah you I still wear shower shoes today. Yeah, me too. I, I gotta have them. I gotta have them. Yeah, I still wear. Them. And unless you unless you living alone, you know what I'm saying. Unless you still put on shower shoes, huh? He still put on shower shoes no matter what. Your husband? Yep. Really? And I know you super duper clean. Yep. You the cleaning fanatic. Yes. He got shower shoes. I can go pick them up and show them to you right now. (laughs) He never got over it. He never got over it. He still wear them. Okay. If I try to pay my bills with soup packages, <laughs> they wrong for that. Noodles, noodles are currency. Let's just be clear. Noodles was take that the light company. Noodles and everything else, right? If I try to pay you with it with M and M's, look. <laughs> they don't take it's that all currency. The light but them noodles, them noodles was big money, right? And and look, before that, it was tobacco too, right? Before they took all that out. Yeah, it was tobacco. It was soda. It was everything. It, the barter system. Right, right. And and a lot of people get in trouble with that barter system too, not honoring their commitments. A lot of people get caught up like that, you know, because they're not honoring those honoring those commitments. Um, let me see. Um. If I tell you to get a bed move, <laughs> I uh, want you to get a bed move. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they don't yeah. want you as a roommate anymore. We're not yeah. getting along, y'all. We're not getting along, and I think you need to leave, okay? But what's crazy to me about it is who gets to decide who needs to leave, right? So because I told you, I told you, Diane, go get a bed move. But what if you <laughs> said you don't want to go? I think it's because who's been in the cell the longest, right? 
That's it's a seniority thing. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, supposed to be seniority, yeah. but it always isn't. Really? Yeah. Okay, so technically it's seniority. Wait, as um Cedric the Entertainer said in the movie Barbershop, seniority. The seniority <laughs> <laughs> is based on seniority. Okay. Um if I yell washer or dryer. Now that's gonna be obviously only in the female prison's hummer burden. Why would they yell washer or dryer? Uh, maybe for them to come get their stuff out. Oh. Okay. Because you walk away and start doing something else, and then somebody else's slot. So uh, ah, okay. Okay. So at, at Chowchilla, it's a washer and dryer. At CIW, you had to um they had the clothespins and stuff. You had to put hang your stuff outside and watch it. For you about okay, so Miss Roberta, when it's your wash time with the laundry, do you stay in there with your clothes or how did that go? Yes, you should, and that's why they'll holler, come get your shit. Oh, okay, okay. Get okay, your okay. stuff because you yeah, because somebody is sitting there waiting for their stuff. They like this waiting because if you leave it open just a little bit, somebody might jump in, then it's a whole other stuff. Oh, okay, okay. Noreen, Noreen, I got a question for you. Yes. You, you got that from a male, right? In prison. Uh -huh. prison. So that don't go for the, the female. That's something else. Yeah, huh? Because I don't know where this came that's, from. Uh, I don't know where he got it from. That's, originally. that's uh, yeah, you go way, yeah, sexual with that one. Really? You get kind of sexual with that one, yeah. Well, okay, you got to explain. You know you can't leave it right there. You know you got to explain. <laughs> well, you it, can't it got to do with it. Wide open. <laughs> you can't leave it wide open. They, 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 they putting something in the washer. You know, it's like, you know, putting something in the, the, the back hole, the back door. Oh, like oh. Yeah, so, so they, so they yeah. having sex in the laundry room? No, that's what you're saying. Wash or dry is just a, a, a term that you uh, receiving a, 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 you know, receiving oh, a shit. Okay, like pineapples. That, yeah. pineapples. Pineapples. Hey, this is why I need to know. Pineapples. This is why I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I need to know, Lionel C. So, so while she's driving, you to give her the receiver. Yeah, look who joined okay. us. Okay, okay. I okay. see Terrell. You missed the really good part because we almost done with the list. This is the list, and it's called "Dear Family." The following is a list of ha some habits I picked up while doing time in prison. Since I'll be paroling soon and moving in with you, I'm sending you this list. So, in the event any of these things occur, you don't trip. Okay, so we almost at the end of the list now, but it has been a trip. Okay, if I get upset because you're in the shower during my shower time. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So you got it. So in some institutions, they give you a slot to shower. Is uh, that what it is? Mm, well, depends. See, you got a bunch of... Uh... What they call it? LB, LB, LGBTQ. Yeah, yeah. They got a certain time slot they get in, and the oh. other people don't want them in there because they somebody feels sexually harassed. And so oh. I'm upset because this person's in there when they shouldn't be in there because now I'm being my privacy being invaded. Yeah. So yeah, Great they got experience. certain time they can shower. Wow. So y'all don't like to take a shower at the LBG, LBGQ community? Oh, no, no. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> you okay. got some people okay. who got lovers okay. in there. You got I, some I, people I, who got I, lovers I, in I, there. I, you got some people who find it disgusting, but you got some people who lust on them and uh, uh, sexual harass them. So they need to shower to themselves, both sides. They want to shower by themselves. Now you get two lovers in there. You get two lovers in there. Who want to be in the shower with two two people following each other? And you don't you ain't into that? They didn't do that with us, but we didn't want to take no shower with Richard in there either. But they didn't do that. They just who was Richard? Who's Richard? Richard came. Richard had cut <laughs> off his uh Diz Nilly so he could get to um CIW. Do you don't remember Noreen? You don't remember Richard was our first. I don't. Yeah, I remember he cut off his dis nilly, but he still uh, with, and they had him in there showering with us and stuff. 
There was one time where he, he uh huh, there was he was only single cell, and then some girls would jump in the shower with him, or yeah, we had to call him a her, but he was not a her. He was he just cut right, off. Right. So so right. he don't have a penis. No, he cut off his dick nearly. Mm. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So that he could be uh, trans transsexual. They know. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Um, if I'm fired from my job because on my way out of work, I strip naked, bent over, spread yeah. my ass cheeks, and well, I, hear, I, I call it a trip. day. And she said, it's not a day. Oh, wow. Did y'all hear that? No, I might not even want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm fired from my job because on my way out of work, I strip naked, bent over, spread my ass cheeks, and coughed, don't trip. <laughs> Where did all this stuff oh, come wow. from? So it's a list. I was telling them that the guy at Folsom, okay, so my first week at Folsom, I was telling them that, you know, they're going to be habits that their family members don't know. And the one I use, Roberta, was the shower shoes because it's the most common one that I know for a fact people who have done a long time in the penitentiary still wear shower shoes years after they get out of the penitentiary. So I told them that and I brought it up and everybody in the room cracked up that first week. Well, last week when I went, the guy gave me this list. Look, Terrell. All the things, huh? All the things. All the things. <laughs> so, and I would and and I thought it would be good to He need to hurry up and get out. Okay. <laughs> he got all them things going. But no look, this, no I've way. seen this circulated. I think somebody gave me this one time when I was at CIW too. Like, this is not the first time I've seen this list. See, Noreen, when a person go to work, they got, before they get back there, they strip them out, butt naked, making sure they don't bring no weapons back there. And when they leave, they strip them out, make sure they don't take no weapon or no contraband up out of the work area. So that's why they strip them out. So this person who's been working for years doing this is used to, when he's leaving work or coming to work, he strip out. It's something that they get used to. So that's what that is. And then the last thing they say is, I look forward to life getting back to normal. See you soon. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so that was that was the list. And I thought this would be uh, fun to go over. So let me ask you guys, are there any other habits of things that you brought with you from prison that you haven't yet stopped doing? That wasn't that we didn't talk about. I got one. I got one. Uh huh. Can you hear me? Uh huh. Uh, every time I go to the store, uh -huh. I was looking to buy a sausage or, or chicharrones <laughs> because I used to eat a lot of sausage over there and cook with chicharrones. Every time I go to the store, I looking and I wanna buy. I buy a couple of times already, but I stopped to do it because chicharrones is really make me really fat. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's not healthy. It's not healthy, it's not healthy for you. I, I, I still eat it. You still eat it? I still eat it with beef jerky. I still keep a, um, a whole bunch of hygiene. I keep, uh, it's just a shitload of it. Like, really? Stuff that <laughs> you probably That's would a good thing, though, no, Carter. That's a good thing. Toothpaste. A whole bunch of You gotta of go to the store. You know what I mean? You gotta never run out of hygiene. I never, yeah, and I still do that to this day. Like I sometimes say, girl, like it, it don't even have to be, if I come out of one pack of, of soap, I'm going to go and replace that soap. The whole pack. Never but mind I, the yeah, fact that you got sure. two or three other packs, right? But the fact that that pack, you got to replace that particular pack. Body wash, yeah, and lotion and deodorant. Yes, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. And I'm going to just say it, but I haven't got out that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. okay, Roberta. Oh, we love no you. We stuff too. Well, we glad, we glad you clean because clearly that's an issue, right? We, we're proud of you for that. Everybody give Roberta a hand. Look, that may be that may be a bad habit to some people, but we all happy, okay? We all happy about that. We Hell want yeah. you to have your hygiene. hygiene. Cleanliness you know next to godliness. Hi, Terrell. The cleanliness next to godliness. Okay, let's not get it twisted. Okay, well, nobody wants to be around nobody funky, so that's a good thing. Terrell, any habits you still got? From prison, let me see. I 
I do the shower shoes for sure. Still, if, if it ain't my shower, I don't know who feet to me is. I'm putting my shower shoes on. Excuse you, excuse the hell out of me. Um, I always, I still look people up and down from head to toe. Why? It's just a habit. It's just, yeah, it's just you always look at the security guard like that. We want you to get to use the ATM. It's a habit. I look at humans up and down. It's just, I don't know. Um, I still live like I'm in the cell because my 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 apartment is my big cell. That's what I. Mean. And you know what? I had my guy. He told me that he said my one is my one one bedroom cell. I was like, no, we don't want it to be that. We want it to be. A, <laughs> we want you free. I don't want you to think of it as a cell. Because the thing about it is this: I know when I'm at home, there's lightning come through there. My God, just don't wake me up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it the next day. You know what I'm saying? And I'm at home, so I, the home is the office, it's the chill spot, it's my peace of mind, it's it's everything. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like going to that cell, locking it up. You know what I'm saying? But uh, you got more. I got more amenities. You know. Let and me I can ask you this. I'm... Let me ask you this. Do you still cook the same food you would have cooked while you was in the cell, or do you eat different? I eat a lot different, but I still eat a lot of food that I had in jail. Hell yeah. I still love my, my, I, look, I ate noodles before they even, you know, I even went to jail when I was a kid. Your top ramen and noodles. a cup of soup. Uh -huh, but then, too. like, uh, so you uh, eat spreads? Of course I eat spreads. Uh, uh, the tuna, you know, the tuna, all of that, all that, you know, and, and it was, okay, and they made it convenient because they put it in, <laughs> they put it in packages now. They don't, you ain't got to cut yourself and, you know, waste it. Waste your energy trying to open the can. You know, they got them in the pouches. So you just take your fork in there, put some, some hot sauce in, quick little snack. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, because um, I encouraged, I would, I had, look, uh -uh, look, wait, look, look, die, look. What? Like her noodles and her sardines. <laughs> that sardine? Yes, indeed. Oh, wow. That's the lick right there. But old oh, snack wow. so can't you, go wrong. You put that together? And you know the thing about it? You know the thing about it? Oysters. You're going to have all the kids. Oysters. because oh. The kids going to love you because kids love the new noobs. They do. <laughs> no, my grandkids eat oysters, and I don't know why they do that. They love the new noobs. They're going to eat them noodles. And then I, I have made some 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 dip, and my kids are like, oh, it's green, until they tasted it. Then they say, oh, you're going to make the green stuff. And they was babies. They was like three years old. But they they see the green like ugh. When I they taste it, well they love it. But what what made it green, sweetie? Avocado dip. You know how we you make dip okay, okay, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying? They're yeah, my kid, up. my grandkids like to eat oysters and hot sauce with Doritos. I tell them to go sit on the porch with that stinky shit. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Figueroa, Figueroa. You have any um anything that we haven't talked about habits that you still keep with you? I still buy everything in twos. You buy oh, it in wow. twos? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to get one thing. I get two. I always have enough for the celly. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. If I wow. buy a case of soup, I buy two. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow. What about you, Lionel? Any other, yeah. any other habits that you kept? Well, you know, all the habits I kept, like from the shower shoes, stacking up on food, and uh, mailing out mail without sealing the envelope, and calling yeah. a uh, calling a plate a tray still. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. yeah. Oh, oh, you know what I struggle with uh, answering the phone. So I used to work um, in the the assignments office where they did um, when they were getting their jobs and stuff. So I would have to answer the phone. Um, hello this assignment and so at my job i answer the phone and i almost always always say this is the assignment office i'll be like damn i'm going back to jail and you've been <laughs> out for some <laughs> years but it's still with you uh, uh, yeah yeah see and this is what this is what people don't realize is that all of that all of that programming and all of that um the habits that you build to survive in there literally will stick with you you know, I was sharing with the guys, I said, um, when it comes to sleeping, because one of the guys was saying, I'm getting out and my family was asking me this. And they said, well, what do you want? He said, I want somewhere where I can go sleep. 
And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, because I don't sleep in here because I never know what's going to happen. And I, and I don't get to sleep well. And I always got to be on alert. So I don't sleep well. So he wanted somewhere, I guess, where he felt comfortable that he could be safe or whatever, and just get some sleep. Oscar, any last things that you, that you still do? Oh yeah. Um, uh... When I have a conversation with people, every time I want to mention people who live in the house, I always tell, it, I always tell them, oh, my Sally. Yeah, I just talk to my Sally. I always mention my Sally. Yeah. I say Sally too a lot, too. I ain't got Sally about me yet, neither. You said you have to be my Yeah, I had that conversation yeah. with somebody. He told, me, he told me, you know what? My co-worker, he, he invited me to his room. But he have a roommate. I look at him and say, roommate? What, what, what do you mean? Sally. I say, he's, he's Sally. He told me, no, roommate. <laughs> that is not a sell. Like, <laughs> and Terrell, you said you still say Sally a lot? I still say yeah, Sally a lot. I still call room sell. And I'll be like, damn. Yeah. Still do that. Still well, do that. I just, I thought this would be entertaining. It was entertaining, but it was also educational. Uh, some things that I learned and, and things that I hope that people watching this one get a chance to understand that these are the things that people who have been incarcerated for periods of time, the habits they build to survive in the penitentiary, and that if you see these things, the main thing to do is don't, don't trip. Rent. And I still play tickets. What's, What's that? that? Tickets. Sports tickets. I'm a professional. I used to have a bookie stuck. Oh, wow. What does that mean? Stop. Oh, wow. Sports bet. Sports bet. Wow. Oh, man, wow. Tickets. Man, I used to keep the bookie stuck everywhere I went. I'm hitting. And they got teasers. If they had teasers, they could really get <laughs> tell, them, tell, them, tell them more about the, the sports bet, how the tickets are, Terrell. Tell them about how the tickets are made. The tickets are made pretty much like on something like this. Uh-huh. They would be on the sheet. Like this would be the ticket. That they'd be little, little, probably a little smaller, and then they'll go around and hand them out during the day before the game start. And then everybody want to come put a bet in. They come put their bets in. They do the numbers and the letters. You know what I'm saying, or whatever. You know, some they, they some in this, in this mold ticket. ticket. You and you bring it. You gonna bring some oysters. You gonna bring something of value. You know what I'm saying? Some stamps. You know, I tell people I was in there. You know, playing. Four and five books of stamps. So that ain't nothing but some chump change. So out here, what, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? But I always win more than I lose. So it's like uh, something I picked up from prison. Like I said, I'm a professional, but um, and you so still when I get now. my bread up, Vegas is going to be, I'm going to be like like Floyd, sitting up, going to that window, <laughs> 10, 30 racks on the, on the one pick, two pick, busting their head. You know what I'm I love it. I love it. that's so well, funny. I, 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 I would introduce you to my brother because he's deep, yeah, you know, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not I'm not gonna do it. No, no, no. introduce him. No, 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 no. He plays that, though, he do them tickets like that too. But you know why, Terrell? We're not doing that because we love you. We're not getting you yes. caught up with him. Oh no, you gotta be able to afford it. You can't be can't be gambling on your butt. <laughs> He hey, gambling, bro. Nah, <laughs> your we last, not doing that. No, we your last that. book of steps or your last couple steps, you know what I'm saying? No, the thing of it is, we know her brother. That's yes. the issue. That's the joke, the running joke here. We know her brother. We <laughs> we love you and we would not connect you with him for any reason. <laughs> wow. Wow, we you. I just want to. I just want to say it has been an interesting, fun conversation. I'm glad that we had it, um, and we had a good laugh here and there today. Robert, any last comments for you, baby? Anything you want to say? Oh, not that I can think of. <laughs> All right, glad you glad you were with us tonight, Oscar. How about you? Oh, no, right now. Everything good. <laughs> Wonderful. Lionel, any last comments from you, sweetie? Yeah, I, I love this what you did because it, it put a lot of light on a lot of things that people don't know about and remind us of certain things. Remind us, remind me of the, the things I still do because you're institutionalized in so many ways. 
Yeah, and I thought it, and I thought it would be a fun way to kind of approach it because when I read it, I was busting up like some of the things I knew why they said it or whatever. Like I knew about signing the receipt, but I didn't know about the thumbprint, right? So it's like, but I'm thinking I know some things, but a lot of people have no idea what any of why people do this stuff. And if you a loved one and they come home to you and you don't know why they're doing that, like, and you probably scared to ask. You know, people are probably scared to ask the question, why are you doing that? You know, so it just leaves so many things unsaid. But anyway, I'm and glad you know, that, I'm glad that you know, one other it. thing that everybody everybody probably been here. I mean, that's been to prison on when I hit when I walk the track, any track, instant. You'll walk walking walking walk the track. Wow. Like my son has to play football. I walk around the track while he while he working out. That's the instant prison. That's thing. hilarious, Terrell. That's a, oh, but let me tell you another thing. I know all of y'all got. I was just talking about this the <laughs> other day. Y'all up at the crack of goddamn dawn. Well, we oh up before God, the door is right. We Wait. up before the door is right. Oh we my up God! The morning, we up. <laughs> Before the door racks. That's exactly. Yes, Listen, Roberta. Okay, so we got a group text. Fully dressed at the window. Four fifty three. Texting. Good morning. <laughs> yes, Roberta and Miss Cheryl. Yes, they super early birds. We were like, oh yeah. my god! I had to turn it off so I could only get it after I wake up. Now, mind you, my I've been working from 10, 10 a.m. to six p.m. for thirty years, so my habit is to get up around eight thirty. They texted at 453. So I had to turn it off and then I wake up and be like, good morning. Mm -hmm. You know, Miss Cheryl texts one morning, is anybody up? I call her like, yes, I'm up. What are you doing? Because <laughs> you do pretty early mornings too, Di. I'm an early bird. I'm an early yeah, bird. You do pretty early. And I used to be much earlier early bird. But once I start working 10 to 6, um, like when I live in the suburbs and I'd have to come in um, I live down the Inland Empire, and I'd have to be to work by nine. I'd have to get up like five thirty in the morning to get my son off and all this stuff and travel, whatever. So I was up early, but after from. I start working ten to six, and that's been thirty years, I'm not as early or early bird as I used to be. But I'm just, uh, but I'll be cracking up because I noticed. So this past weekend, we had our Central Avenue Jazz Festival, and one of the guys that was assigned to help me with the parking staff did like. Uh, 15 years in the pen he didn't have to be there till like um eight o'clock why is he texting me at 6 30 he ready. <laughs> he ready to work 6 30 uh miss north i'm like okay he don't understand he don't understand i'm not up yet but anyway miss roberta any any last comments from you sweetie um no oh do does anybody accidentally call their cabinet the locker the locker <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes I'll say go in the locker, but I meant the cabinet. So, <laughs> yeah, my bad. Okay. But somebody it's said though. me too. <laughs> so uh -huh. I said somebody said me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're still calling it a cell, so I don't see what's no different. I think that's on the same level, sweetie. Yeah. Okay. I think you're calling it a cell, and you and you calling the cabinet the locker. I think that's equal basis. <laughs> I, I learned what washing machine means. Okay, washer and dryer. Washer <laughs> and dryer. Kitchen and kitchen, huh? Kitchen and kitchen. And we didn't know. We didn't know. Because see, in the women's prison, it they Roberta was saying they actually had washers and dryers and they made sense so you can come get your stuff out. But Lionel was like, wait a minute, hold up. Did you get that from a man or from a woman? I was like, from a men's prison. He's like, no, that's a different meaning. Different meaning. Yeah. Okay, so again, we learned something. Terrell, washer dryer. Did you get the? Did you get, your dryer. get to say your final comments? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch your okay. dryer. Well, I appreciate you guys. I hope that everybody out there that might get this, you might be entertained, amused, but also educated by our conversation tonight. And I thank you guys for being with us. This is another week of Free to Heal. You can check us out on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Twitter, X, whatever it's called right now, all social media platforms. Leave us a comment. Tell us, uh, they'd be great for you to tell us the habits that you maintained um, from coming out of prison, okay? And we'll see you guys next week. See y'all later. Washer. <laughs> Dryer. <laughs>